All right, let's get started. Father God, we thank you once again for just another day, God, another day that you have made and giving us the opportunity to rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we are rejoicing and we are glad to be in it. God, we thank you for the beauty of holiness. We thank you for allowing us to spend time with you in the study of your word and that you can enlighten us and help us to understand what thus saith the Lord and give us insight into who we are and what your desire is for our lives, why you brought us here, what our purpose is. And so God, we lift our hands and we open our mouths today and we just glorify you, God, for you are so awesome, so great, so mighty, and you are everlasting. So God, we ask you to just allow each of us to decrease that you might increase, that your glory may be revealed once again and the enemy be defeated. So God, we thank you in advance of the victory that is already here in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Kenya. God bless you. Um, all right. So um, we are in Revelation. A lot of times they say that um, Revelation is that book that you shouldn't read because it's too complicated and it's you know, it's whatever, whatever they say. Um, but it's not. It's one of the greatest books that are in the Bible because God gave us some insight into, good morning, uh, Reverend Brickhouse. God has given us insight into, good morning, caller. God has given us insight into the things that he desires for us to know um during these last and evil days and so last on wednesday we we just kind of took a walk around heaven and we saw in um Re revelation chapter four some of the some of the images and the beauty and the majesty of heaven in chapter four now i just want to go into chapter five because and I want you to keep in mind um, the prophecy that we discuss in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, 24 through 31, where we talked about Daniel's prophetic word of the 70 weeks that would happen. And we understood that 483 of those weeks have already transpired from the day the order was given to go back to Jerusalem and build the temple until the crucifixion of Christ was exactly 483 years. And, and there are seven years or one week left of that prophecy. And so in that, we haven't seen that one week yet because we know it will be triggered by um, a peace treaty being signed between Israel and its enemies for seven years. Once that peace treaty is signed, the Bible says it will usher in the last seven years of life as we know it on this planet. And so right now, because the, the, the prophetic word that Daniel spoke is a clock and, and not to, not to complicate it any, but um, when Daniel said that the, when the word would be given to go back to Jerusalem, which was spoken by the king um, Artaxerxes to Nehemiah, um, when he said those words, it actually stopped another prophecy that had preceded it, which was the 70 year prophecy of Daniel. So God puts these, these prophecies on clocks. And so the 70 years ended when the king said, go back to Jerusalem, yet the 70 weeks started at the same time. And so I hope I, oh, I didn't lose you, but the 70 weeks started at the same time. And so um, we know we have seven years left of the prophecy that was spoken by Daniel. So we literally sit under the prophetic word of Daniel to this day because this last seven years have not happened yet and so um 
we live in what we call the dispensation of grace and grace God has given the world grace from the time of the crucifixion of Christ until now to reclaim and redeem ourselves back to God and eventually that clock will stop and that will not be we will not be able to do that anymore and so while we have the chance we give our lives to Christ now because we have the opportunity but let's look on let's look in um, uh, chapter 5 today that was just a little background but I want to go into chapter 5 um, verse number 1 and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne who's that that sits on the throne that's God who sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side and it was sealed with seven seals so there was writing inside the book um, and there was writing on the back of the book and it was sealed with seven seals all right and I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Who is worthy? Who is there? And this is John's revelation. Remember, this is John having these revelations of what is happening. But he sees that um, the angel says, is there anybody that's worthy? Is there anyone that can open these books? And, and verse number three says, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon. And there was nobody that was that was worthy enough to even look at the book, let alone open it. And then in verse um, four, John says, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Couldn't open it. God bless you, Pastor Pike. Couldn't open the book, couldn't read the book, couldn't look at the book. Nobody. Nobody in heaven, nobody in earth. And then in verse number five, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. And I think we have, hey, Ben, good morning. Hath prevailed, meaning has overcome. And who is the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, and that is Jesus Christ himself. And the angel said that Christ is here and he has prevailed. He has won something. I want to make sure you understand this, that he has prevailed or overcome something to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Um, and I beheld, verse number six, I get excited about this, I'm sorry, <laughs> and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and the midst of the elders stood a lamb, Christ, Christ is the lamb of God, stood a lamb as it had been slain, right? having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the world. So John sees an image of the crucified Christ. He had just been crucified. Now, when after his death, um, Christ now appears in heaven. So we always were under, under the impression that revelation is a future book. It's not all future. There is some past, some present, and some future. This just happens to be some past, right? Because it's saying that now this event happened 2,000 years ago. I'm going to say it again because I think it's very important that what we're getting ready to read um, plays a huge part in this right here because um, Christ is able to open the seals on the book 
right after he was crucified. And let me read it again. And beheld, and be, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, this is verse number six, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, right? And we went through the seven spirits of God. If you want to recap on that, you just have to go back to Isaiah chapter 11, verse number two. All right. Verse number seven, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Who sat on the throne? God sat on the throne. So Christ, having just been crucified, still the image of being slain, takes the book from God, right? And when he had taken the book, this is verse number eight, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, I'm not sure exactly what these prayers are, but I can almost guarantee that they're not prayers for houses, cars, diamonds, and pearls. These are probably more um, prayers and I'm just speculating, but these are probably more prayers of the coming of the kingdom of God, the restoration of the kingdom, things like that. Um, and so they began to worship him because he is the only one that is worthy to open this book. And now remember, this is, this is right after he... God bless you, Sister Brickhouse. This is right after he was crucified. We are in Revelation chapter 5, verse number, looks like 8. Um, right after he was crucified. And so he was crucified 2,000 years ago. Mm, I love it. And so what's getting ready to happen, and I'm kind of doing this as a setup, because what's getting ready to happen when he opens the seals, right, is something that has already taken place, not a future event. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, and when he had taken the book, the, uh, we did that. Verse number nine. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign where? We shall reign where? Let me say that one more time just to make sure y'all got that. We shall reign where? We shall reign on the earth. And so the millennial kingdom, the kingdom, and I say millennial because it's a thousand year reign of Christ on earth that is coming. And those of us um, that are, those of us that are serious about him and working with him, shall be in his millennial kingdom. I hope that makes sense. Um, and, beheld, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. Now, I don't know what, I didn't know what that was, 10,000 times 10,000, that's actually 100 million. Um, but then it goes on to say, 10,000 times 10,000, th thousand and thousands of thousands. And so the, the number is um, the true number of the angels are unknown. But we can tell just from the 10,000 by 10,000 that it is a massive number. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such 
as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard heard I saying, be blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lived forever and ever. Now, so we have the setup. Christ is crucified on earth. He appears in heaven as a slain lamb, and he is the only one that is found worthy to open the seals. So let's take a few minutes. We got about 13 minutes left. Let's take a few minutes and open. We'll try to open all the seals, but let's open some seals, right? Um, and see what these seals represent. And I saw, and this is verse, chapter 6, verse number 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Um, this when this seal is open, you see this image on a white horse. He has a bow, but he has no arrows. And so he has the ability to fight, but he has no weapons to fight with. Um, we know that this, this entity that gets ushered in when the seal is broken is the Antichrist. Now, the Antichrist is not a, and remember, all of this happened 2,000 years ago. When Christ opened this seal, it happened immediately after his, his crucifixion. So, the Antichrist is now ushered in when the first seal is broken. So, that spirit of the Antichrist is now unleashed on the world. Um, I'll have to show you, I'll get the scripture. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's in John where, it ta where John again talks about, um, the spirit of Antichrist is in the world, um, now. And that spirit has, has been resident in this world for the last 2000 years. Let's go to verse number three. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, for the last 2000 years, this has been going on. There's been murder, there's been violence, there's been killing. And so this spirit is the spirit of just total destruction of people. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, a third measure of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And so this third beast, or this third horse man, is now the, um, is now the spirit of poverty because we are, we have, he has ushered in through this seal, poverty uh, pestilence, uh, different types of issues around the world. And so we may not see it as much here in the United States, even though it does exist. But in other parts of the world, we see this more prevalent. And we will see this more in this country, even now after the pandemic and even going forward, that there will be more of this. And he opened the fourth seal, verse number seven, and I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. 
And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, this, this is important because we now understand that death is an entity. It is a, it is a living, breathing entity. And death is always around us. So death is not a transitional state from life. It is an entity that desires um, to, well, let's say, to take us. Let's use that for, for lack of a better word. Because in Corinthians, it says the last enemy that shall be defeated is death. How do you defeat death? You defeat death with eternal life. If I can live forever, then death has no hold on me. Meaning that if I live for Christ and my reward is eternal life, then I have defeated death. Even though I may die physically, even though I may die physically, I will live forever, right? And so um, the fourth, a fourth part of the earth is, I can't really explain that, sis. I don't understand what that actually means because death has now taken on the entire world. Um, but maybe it's out of, out of the seven or six billion people, one fourth of them at all times is dying. I don't really understand um, that statement. So I have to do some more research and I've been doing research on that, but I haven't come up with a solid answer yet. But that's a good question. Um, because I guess because death doesn't kill, death doesn't get everyone. It, it can get one fourth, <laughs> uh, something like that. I don't know. Let me not go into that because I'm not real sure. But I'll get back to you on that one. Um, and so the first four seals are opened and you see the four, what we like to call the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The white horse, the Antichrist. This second horse is really uh, um, the horse of war and violence. The third horse is the outgrowth of war is pestilence and poverty and the outgrowth of that is death. So they are all linked and communicating together um, as the first four seal. But all four of those have been released. 2,000 years ago, all of these were released. Um, let's see, I have five minutes. Verse number nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they heard. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Um, hey, Barbara, good morning. Um, these are the martyrs for Christ. If you if you uh, were to read Fox's Book of Martyrs, it lists all of those that were martyred for the cause of Christ. This is also people in 2021 that may be in the jungles of Nigeria or in different parts of the world that are being killed um, because they're preaching the gospel. And so all of these are those that have died for the cause of Christ or killed for the cause of Christ. So they are under the altar now crying for retribution. And God is saying, not yet. And verse number 11, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season 
until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So it's not time yet. But again, um, this statement now becomes past and present because, well, actually it becomes past, present and future because it speaks to those that have been martyred, those that are being martyred and those that will continue to be martyred throughout um history. Verse number 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth herself her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and of the mount of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of the wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And so, when the sixth seal is open, now we're talking about, now we're looking at the sixth seal has not been broken yet, because this earthquake has not happened. So there is a massive, when the sixth seal is open, There is an earthquake that will literally hit the planet and it will move. Let's let's go back. Um, And the heaven verse number, let me, I'm sorry, verse number 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and every island were moved out of their place. And so because of this earthquake, there will be shifts in land masses. And so we don't know what that means. We really don't. Because that means that California could break off into the sea. They've had so many earthquakes there, they could just break the whole thing, break off. There could be, um, United States can shift north. It could, the whole continent could shift south. We don't know. It could move west. It could move east. We don't know for sure. When it says all of the land masses will be moved out of their place, but can you imagine if if North America was broken off from South America and North America went north and went further north and became it became cold all the time? We don't know exactly what this means. But we know that this is going to come when Christ opens the sixth seal. So the first five seals, already done. The sixth seal has not been done yet. I know I ain't see no hearts or nothing today. I see you all must be listening very intently. Um, And so I'm going to stop right there. Because we don't see the seventh seal until later. And as we go through these, I'm going to go through some more on um, as a matter of fact, let's do that real quick, okay? Um, the seventh seal. If you skip chapter seven and go to chapter eight, remember we said on Wednesday that the four the four beasts are constantly rejoicing and praising God. And here it says that, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Something that has never happened. Even heaven, what's getting ready to come on the earth is so devastating that even heaven will be silent. And it says, and I stood in the seven, I stood 
Wow. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with, with, filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And so, um, like I said, what's getting ready to happen is so devastating that even heaven itself will become silent. And then we will go into, on Wednesday, starting from verse number six, the trumpets. Once the trumpets are blown, and this again is all now future, when the trumpets are blown, we'll see what gets ushered in then. I hope y'all got something out of this today. Um, like I said, anything you don't understand, you can text me, email me, call me, however you want to do it, um, and we can have a conversation. All right? God bless you. Hope everyone has a great day. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Father God, we thank you. God bless you, sir. Father God, we thank you once again for all that you have said and all that you have done, helping us understand what is to come. And so, God, as we continue and endeavor to study your word and to understand who you are, God, we ask you to just be with us, love on us, teach us, help us to grow, help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Amen. Have a good Amen. rest of the weekend. God bless you, cousin. God bless. Bless you.